Welcome to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Joyous conversations about what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about our one reality. You have nothing to fear. You are eternal and you are perfectly loved. Knowing the truth changes everything. Now, here's Roberta. Welcome to Seek Reality. I'm Roberta Grimes and I'm very glad you're with us today. You know, among the big changes in our lives that will result from our coming to better understand and to more widely accept the details of the greater reality in which we all live will be a new appreciation for the powers of our minds. We now know that our brains don't generate our minds at all, but instead every human mind is an inextricable part of the fundamental consciousness that continuously manifests this universe. And as such, each mind is powerful. Jesus told us this 2,000 years ago. He said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, now that's the tiniest seed you can imagine, almost can't see it. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. That's Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. That's what Jesus said, and he was absolutely right about the powers of our minds. More and more, we're learning to use the powers of our minds to affect our reality. And the most important way that most of us do this is in the area of our physical healing. I know almost nothing about energy medicine. I only know that when it's properly used, it works very well. I think I understand why it works. And it's clear that our minds are immensely powerful, even though we don't yet really know how to use them. And it's time now for me and also for you, for all of us, to begin to better understand how to use the powers of our minds to aid the health of our bodies. So to that end, Dr. Larry Burke is with us today for the second time. Larry Burke, MD, CEHP, lots of letters, is a holistic radiologist. He's a real doctor, a holistic radiologist and dream tapping coach trained in hypnosis, acupuncture and EFT. He's another wonderful, serious scientist who has gotten off the reservation. I love that. He was co-founder of Duke Integrative Medicine and a founding board member of the American Board of Scientific Medical Intuition. Former board member, uh, president of the rather Rhine's Research Center and his books are Let Magic Happen. Adventures in Healing with a Holistic Radiologist. That came out more than a decade ago. Uh, Also, or just about, I guess, a decade ago. Also, more recently, Dreams That Can Save Your Life, Early Warning Signs of Cancer and Other Diseases. He wrote that one with Kathleen O'Keefe Kavanaugh, who also has been, as you know, a Seek Reality guest. Larry Burke has been a guest trainer at the Monroe Institute since 2014, and that's how I met him. And during the COVID-19 health crisis that's underway now, if you're listening to us in the future, it's now the spring of 2020. We're in the middle of it. You know how it turned out. He's in the process, though, of doing a lot of help, giving a lot of help to people online, which is a wonderful thing. Larry, welcome. I'm so glad to have you with us. Yeah, Roberta, it's great to be back, and so lots of interesting things to talk about, for sure. (laughs) That's for sure. But first, let's hear a little about your history. You were a traditional physician, right? A radiologist? I was one of the early developers of MRI the knee and MRI the shoulder back in the 80s, and that that led me into an interest in electromagnetic safety issues, uh, because we weren't really sure whether it was safe to put people on the big MRI scanners. So I joined the Bioelectromagnetic Society and went down the rabbit holes into all the health effects of uh, electromagnetic fields. Back Back then, there were no cell phones. It was all about power lines and radar. Wow. So you've always been kind of interested in energy and how it affects our health. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, back then it was a very practical uh, diagnostic uh, approach of just sending the radio frequencies into the body uh, from a, a transmitter inside the MRI scanner. The body's hydrogen protons resonating with the frequencies we're putting in, uh, flipping uh, their orientation, and then a few seconds later flipping back and sending the signal back to the receiver. And then we made amazing pictures out of that. And that was really a huge step forward from uh, ionizing radiation or x-rays, which cause uh, damage instantaneously when you get bombarded with x-rays. Things happen in your body. With MRI scan, fortunately, in the short term, exposure for like an hour 
there's no known health effects to uh, the patient. The concerns about health effects of magnetic fields are more about long-term exposure. So, you know, talking to our cell phone every day now or, or, sit, or having a house next to big power lines. It's the chronic exposure that, that really is the cause for concern. So, all right, tell me then, if I use my cell phone and it's by my ear, is that a problem? If you actually read the package insert, it says not to place it against your head. It says keep it. <laughs> Everybody does. Though. Yeah, keep a ga- air gap between your head and the phone, and it's in the manuals. No one ever reads it. <laughs> and, Nobody uh, does. <laughs> uh, now I'm, I uh, recommend two safer options: or to use your speakerphone when you can, or if you need a headset, you get an air tube headset, which has a plastic column of air between the phone and your ear so that there's no electricity being transferred into your head. Those crazy Bluetooth things, uh, they're terrible because you have a transmitter in your ear, you know, so. Oh, so, so Yeah. Oh, gee. So. You and I are going to have to talk a little bit afterwards about what I should get because I worry about that, actually. I don't worry, but I mean, I think, gee, I use my phone so much. Maybe that's not necessarily healthy, so we'll talk about that. But um, energy medicine is very, very new. I, I think most people have never even heard of it. But you have letters after your name, right? Um, that The CEHP, what does that stand for? Yes, Certified Energy Health Practitioner. That's my certification through the Association for Comprehensive Energy Psychology Organization, which is the major EFT or tapping uh, organization uh, around around the country and, and, and actually internationally. So I've been certified there since 2010, and I've been doing EFT since 2002. And so that's my main credential in terms of energy healing uh, in my, my main credential about the, the energy hazards is uh, that I was on the uh, Society of Magnetic Resonance Imaging Safety Committee uh, way back in the 80s and have been you know, following that field ever since. And actually, I have a online course that I'm launching in May that's called Electromagnetic Hazards and Healing, Staying Healthy in a 5G World. So that's coming up in May. So. Oh, then that's another question I want to ask you. People are actually telling me that 5G is causing the coronavirus. 5G is the end of the world. I get emails like this. Tell us about 5G. What's that all about? Well, I just published a blog last Sunday on it, and it's on my Facebook page. If you, if you can find it on uh, either my Larry Burke MD Facebook page or, or my um, uh, or my regular personal Facebook page, or on my website, which is LarryBurke.com. Uh, so, the 5G uh, has is a very interesting phenomenon. It's been going on for the last pretty much two years. Uh, just to clarify, what all the G's stand for? We're just talking about the generation of cell phones. So the uh, you know it's gone from 1G to 2G to 3G. We're now in three or four G generation cell phones and those operate usually in the frequency range of about a thousand megahertz which is also equivalent to one gigahertz Um, when you get into 5g they've raised the frequency and lowered the wavelength so it can be anywhere from uh, like two gigahertz up to even into the 90s Uh, and it has a much uh, higher frequency much uh, shorter wavelengths. One of the issues with 5G is it doesn't penetrate trees and leaves and branches very well. So rather than having your cell phone transmitter every half mile, which is about what we have now, there's likely going to be a transmitter on every other telephone pole. So there might be one right in front of your house. Oh, is that what people are worried about? That's what people are worried about. And also Elon Musk is putting... Uh, thousands of satellites in the sky as part of his Starlink network. So there's going to be no place on Earth where you can escape 5G. And there are certain places in the country right now that are called EMF safety zones. The most famous one is Green Bank, West Virginia, which is, I think, 100 square miles surrounding the Bird radio telescope. No cell phone transmissions are permitted in that area, so it doesn't mess up the 
radio telescope performance, but actually people move there to escape from the EMF exposure that goes on in so many uh, places around the world now. Wow. Well, what are we worried about with it? What do we, what does, is it going to give us cancer? Is it going to make us go crazy? What do we worry about with well, that? Well, you mentioned cell phone use and putting it up against your, your ear. Well, I have four friends who, who died of malignant brain tumors who were heavy cell phone users. In the, really? The, tum- the tumors were right right over where they put the um, – the, oh the, my! On the side goodness. where they were talking, and, and and that's I mentioned that in my blog. And then there's also stories about women who, unfortunately, have the habit of carrying their uh, cell phones in their bra. And oh, they, who knew? Who knew? I never heard of that. And, and they've now been getting bra uh, cell phone shaped breast cancers in their breast, uh, <sighs> matching you, the location. Why don't? Why doesn't everybody know this? Larry, why? Because we are we are completely enamored with the Internet of Things, uh, artificial intelligence, the prospect for you know every device we have communicating with every other device, including you know uh, driverless cars. I mean, they've even got babies' diapers that are wireless now that tells you when the baby's wet. I mean, it, it's that crazy. And it is, that is crazy. Wow. So, and and um, the unfortunate thing is the industry is regulated by the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, and they don't have any representation by significant uh, medical professionals. Uh, it's all run by engineers and, and also run by the telecom companies. So, oh, gee. Uh, and, and unfortunately, we've known about the problems with wireless radiation since the 60s, starting with military uh, intelligence, uh, uh, mil- uh, Office of Naval Research uh, on radar, uh, and then moving up through the 80s. Uh, and friends of mine who are researchers in the field discovered that you could have uh, effects on cells, on actually the calcium channels in your cells, at a far lower amount of power than would ever be put out by a cell phone. So uh, these are resonance phenomena, just like an MRI. All it takes is the right frequency. You know how you can break a, a glass singing the right note? Yes. I if you have the right. Other people can. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, right. uh, the classic, oh, Fitzgerald, people like that could do that. And right. that's, that's, a, that's a resonance phenomenon where the energy gets absorbed because it has the right frequency. Um, it has nothing to do with how much power or she's putting out. I mean, it helps to have a powerful voice, but if you got the right frequency, it's going to work. So the, the, the issue becomes... The FCC regulations that were put out in 1996 specifically say if the amount of power coming out of your wireless device doesn't cook you, it's okay. Oh, uh, uh, they oh, measured uh, the heating of the body from oh. a cell phone application and said if it doesn't raise your temperature by a certain degree, uh, then you're okay. Whereas the science up to that point are clearly showed that these effects occur at the cellular level at frequency at power levels that are far below uh, what would cause heating in the body. But since these are a bunch of engineers who only care about heating and not health effects, that's where the standards came from. We've had those standards in place since 1996. And then also in 1996, the Telecommunications Act was passed. It said no municipality – can limit the placement of a cell phone transmitter based on environmental health concerns. So, are you be- kidding? In other words, you don't care if you kill people. We don't care if you kill people. Just put it in the most convenient place. That's what they said. That's what they said. And no, and, and that was a national law. And, and that was the year that cell phone towers proliferated, started proliferating all around the, the country. Wow. And it, they let the cat out of the bag then, even though they knew that these things were harmful. In 1993, uh, there was a famous cell phone engineer for Ericsson, you know, the big Swedish telecom company. Yes. He, he was the lead engineer. And he's now famous as the man who was allergic to radio waves. That they, they put a big cell phone transmitter outside his office while he was creating the first cell phones. Oh. He got headaches, rashes, you know, uh, uh, you know, all these terrible dizziness, t- terrible symptoms. And, you know, 
they thought he was the only one, so they shielded his office. Oh, my they goodness. They gave him shielded clothes. They shielded his Volvo, uh, and none of that helped. And it turned out that 18 of the other members of his engineering team all had similar symptoms. So Erickson actually, in 1993, published you know, like a document called Hypersensitivity in the Workplace. So they knew long before any of these oh. things were passed in 96 that this was a problem. And, and it's just a blind rush to um, – it's what I call mindless proliferation of technology. I can see that, yes. And, and yeah, that's – I guess I'm speechless. I'm not, I'm, I had no idea. I am unclear about what to even do about it. What should we try to do about it? Well, raise awareness is the first thing, which is why I'm talking about it now, which is why I wrote the blog. And there are a number of EMF organizations out there that are publicizing this. The best one at the moment is Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s uh, Children's uh, Health Defense Fund. And they have a, an amazing lawyer named uh, Daphna Tekover, who is uh, was an Israeli uh, military um, lawyer who saw the wireless development many years ago happening there and – and passed some laws in Israel to ban the use of wireless in in, in the public schools, uh, realizing it was going to have detrimental effects on the kids because kids are more radiation sensitive than, than adults. So so that um, is a great resource. And they just recently put out a an article with an automated letter that would go to your mayor saying, please do not – let them put 5G installations into our public schools during the quarantine, which has been going on in different states around the country. There, you'll see a, a, a telecom company van pulled up in the parking lot, and they're upgrading the Wi-Fi in the school. What what will 5G get in, in a positive way? Does that just mean that you have better reception? You can play better video games? What does that – what's good the, about it, if anything? The, the download speed will be – somewhat improved your, your video instead of getting your movie in you know download in three minutes you'll get it in a minute you know so yes the speed but if your kid has a brain tumor they're not going to care how fast they can load their, you know, download Absolutely their movie not. Uh, but the, the, uh, when you really dig deeper into it uh, they claim it's oh because we want to have that technology for wireless cars you know for, for uh, driverless cars apparently you can still do that without 5g uh, the the real um, <laughs> advantage of 5G is it carries a lot more data. So what's really going on is the, the telecom companies have found a new source of revenue, and that's selling all our wireless data to the highest bidder. So the, the, 5G is basically a surveillance uh, system. You're kidding. That is outrageous. It is. I'm speechless. So, so what what can people do if they're as upset as they I think as I am right now, and what, as as we all ought to be that this is happening? What what should we do? Tell well, the people I, in our who run our our cities not to put this in. What? Yeah, I, I mean, if you if you if you go to uh, read my blog at the end, there is a link to, to the uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr.'s uh, Children's Health Defense Fund uh, letter to your mayor. It's great. You just type in your your address and it automatically populates your mayor's name and you just hit the button and send a letter. It's, it's like easy. So that's the first thing we can do. Okay. Well, um, in the materials that go with this um, podcast, everyone, we will put the information about uh, if you care about uh, trying to stop the 5G problem, um, you know, how, how you can easily get that letter sent. We'll, we'll, we'll put that in. Wow, I never even thought we'd go off on that. That I have other things I want to talk about, and I think we probably should should talk about all the positive things you do with energy, but that's pretty scary. I had no idea. Well, yeah, that's why I'm putting. I put the course together as electromagnetic hazards and healing because I've got uh, my three friends who are going to be on the uh, faculty with me on the class. One is actually uh, someone who is electrically sensitive, who had to quit his job as a musician because Wi-Fi was everywhere. He couldn't escape it. Right. And and he now went back and retrained as an electrician, and now works with electricians as an EMF consultant to go into people's homes and say, look, you need to change this wiring. You need to uh, get rid of your uh, wireless router. I mean, these are some of the basic things. I already mentioned the cell phones, but in your house, you should have all your devices connected by wires, not, not by wireless. 
Okay, very interesting. Oh my goodness, we we may have to do a whole separate program about this. I'm sure there's a lot more you can say. And if well, you want, if you want to have wireless, please turn it off at night when you go to bed. Why is that? Because so you, it cook, it cooks you at night when you aren't you aren't using it. Well, and you don't need it, and you might as well give your body eight hours to, to recover from the, the constant barrage of EMF all day long. My goodness! Wow. Well, let's talk about some of the other things you've done, which which are to me fascinating. One of the things that that you've done is to become aware of the fact that our dreams will often tell us when we're sick. Talk a little about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> by the way, I just heard reports that people are having dreams about tsunamis right before uh, the pandemic hit the United States. Oh my goodness. We sure have had that hit us for sure. Oh wow. Oh wow. Yeah, and and of course there's a whole rash of stories about uh, pe- have people having hundreds of dreams before, right before 9/11 and a friend yes. of mine a friend of mine had them for the whole year in advance, you know. So so clearly, I mean, the laws of time and space don't hold anymore when it comes to the dream world, and I've had many precognitive dreams and and the, the 18 women in my dream book all had uh, dreams uh, basically telling them that they had breast cancer before they had any diagnostic tests or lumps or anything else. And since then, I've found lots of people with other types of illnesses who, that are foreshadowed in their dreams. So. Now, you, you talked about this in your TED Talk, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and since – the TED Talk was before the, the Dreams That Can Save Your Life book came out. And then since then, I've been combining the dream work with my EFT tapping work. And what I find is that – have every client keep a dream diary, and then we'll have them uh, you know, bring a relevant dream. Some people, when, once they start working with me, they have a dream the night before our sessions, almost always. And it's like, and it tells us exactly what we need to do the next day. And if I ever get stuck <laughs> figuring out what to tap on with people, we say, wow. okay, what's the dream telling us? And it often guides the way. Everyone, I, I watched this TED Talk. It was done in 2016. It's a TEDx. Um, and it was was banned, right? Okay, that's the first time I ever got banned for anything. And, and it was, <laughs> I love it. It, it was banned since it was it wasn't technically banned. It was removed from the TEDx site. It's still on YouTube, uh, but it uh, it has a a disclaimer on it saying this does not meet TED's uh, scientific criteria. Even though I was very careful in the talk to uh, not make any unfounded claims, the most outrageous recommendation I made was uh, that if you're confused by the mammography guidelines, and there are two conflicting guidelines now, either get a mammogram every year starting at age 40 or every other year starting at age 50, if you're one of those women who decided you're not going to start until you're 50 and you have a dream when you're in your 40s about breast cancer, don't wait till you're 50 to get a mammogram. That's that, that was what I said, and it's like that's a very conservative thing to say. And I said, keep a dream diary. Oh yeah, I recommend it. That was why they banned it. This is a very banned. it's a good TED talk, and I think you'll enjoy it, everyone. I'll put the link to it uh, in the materials as well, so you can go and watch it too. Um, but uh, Kathleen uh, um, O'Keefe Kavanaugh has told me just how amazing it was to have her breast cancer you know diagnosed and i think that i it's just a, a very interesting thing that your mind and your guides of course will be telling you things you need to know if you're paying attention so you're saying doctor that we should keep a dream diary because if we put it together we may see patterns in our dreams uh, yep and uh, particularly on our cats Guides were somewhat unique in her dreams. The, the, the famous Franciscan monks, which <laughs> are amazing, and they're on the cover of the book. Uh, but mo- the most common guides were either white-coated healthcare professionals who people would then meet a few weeks later in during the course of their treatment, wow. or or a, a deceased relative like a grandmother or, or a father, and with telling them. And, it, and one of the women actually had her deceased father. And a white-coated doctor from the Mayo Clinic in the same dream. So when that happens, you got to pay attention. So, so these doctors don't have any memory of having been in someone else's dream. I would assume. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. And uh, and then, oh, oh, I will mention the other time. The only other time I've been banned from anything was <laughs> uh, two months ago. I posted a, 
a couple of articles on my on, in a Facebook group about possible connection between 5G and uh, Wuhan and the coronavirus. And I was subsequently banned from posting in all Facebook groups after that. Oh, my goodness. So there, there may be a connection between this virus and the 5G? Well, when you get banned for suggesting something, it tells you that there's something people don't want to know and Absolutely. don't want, don't want you to know and and when you when you look a little deeper into it this is still controversial i mean uh, but there are reputable scientists who are actually supporting this theory because the first major hotspots were wuhan which was the pilot city for 5g in china and oh. Milan in Italy was the pilot city in Italy uh, f- during the outbreak f- with rolled out 5G in 2019. All these places just rolled out 5G in 2019. So, and it's uh, – there are some, you know, concerning uh, coincidences, uh, uh, including some of the strange symptoms that are associated with the uh, pandemic, uh, you know. People get pneumonia, but it's not a normal uh, pneumonia. It has – people have a very difficult time getting oxygen into their system. Their lungs are not as sick as sometimes what we see in what's called ARDS or acute respiratory distress syndrome. But for some reason, there's a block to getting oxygen into their red blood cells. It turns out that is a symptom of electromagnetic field exposure that unusual phenomenon unbelievable uh, really and there's also scientific oh, evidence gee. that that uh, electromagnetic fields cause an enhanced inflammatory response in your system so those are two things but it gets stranger than that in the last couple <laughs> of weeks they've been pointing out that uh, people lose their taste uh, their sense of taste yes. and smell yes they, that's, that's true also a known effect of electromagnetic fields on the olfactory bulb in the, no- in the nose and brain. Uh, and then there are also just recently reports of people feeling electrical burning on the skin yes, and headaches. That. All those things are classic signs of electromagnetic hypersensitivity syndrome. And then they're putting these people in ICUs. They're full of wireless devices. So, of course. You know, uh, it, uh, those are all coincidences, but, you know. I can't get over this. And, and nobody cares about the health of the of the world to try to – so you're saying this is I – mean, I guess I can't even ask a question, and this is a first for me. You're saying that health professionals in various countries know or have some awareness of some of what you're telling us now, but they don't raise a flag and say, wait a minute – Actually, very, very few physicians are informed on the electromagnetic uh, health issues. It's uh, um, rather unusual for someone to have actually read the scientific literature, and there's lots of it, but it's not published in the journals like, like Journal of American Medical Association, New England Journal. They don't publish anything on this. So so most doctors are completely unaware of this, this phenomena, and uh, unfortunately – what we are aware of is that the telecom companies have spent billions of do- dollars lobbying uh, the government for the last 20 plus years, and now they've managed to persuade every government in the planet to race for 5G dominance. That's considered like this is the holy grail. And dominance, in other words, we get more 5G than you got. Is that, that what we want? They yes. want to say. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, we have to be the first. We have to, you know, have the best. We have to, <laughs> and and no, even no, no, even small consideration of any health health effects. No. So, so the one leading the charge here is Robert Kennedy Jr. Is that what you what yeah, you're saying? Robert F. Kennedy. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. The problem is he also was all against vaccines, which that didn't seem to be as big a deal. So are we worried about that he, he won't be taken as seriously about this? Because this is important. Um, you know, both issues are very controversial. And, of course, when you look at what's go- going on down the road in the pandemic is, you know, the consideration for development of a future vaccine and the possibility of mandatory vaccines. So... That's all down the pike somewhere. Who's looking out for the health of the people? 
Uh, very few watchdogs are, are, are doing their job. The media is completely bought and paid for by telecoms, so don't expect the media to be hyping any safety concerns. Yeah, yeah they were also bought and paid for by China, apparently, because no, nobody was after them nearly as early as they should have been. But this is really – I mean, I am the actual opposite of a crusader, but it seems to me that anybody who has children and grandchildren they love – has got to be concerned about what we're doing to the health of the countries, all the countries. Pretty, pretty upsetting. I'm sorry. And, 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 and which is why I have on my teaching team, I have two other folks who are uh, dedicated to the healing arts. So uh, one of my acupuncture colleagues is, is also an expert in electrical healing devices. So he's going to be sharing his expertise in, in that area. And then my other friend is one of my, uh, uh, energy psychology colleagues who's who's an expert in energy healing and we're going to be uh, addressing a lot of these issues uh, I decided to balance the course from hazards and healing not just to make it all gloom and doom so oh please in fact let's talk about some positive things now um, t- talk about EFT talk about the kinds of energy healing that you use in your practice uh, yes yeah, so I am pretty much strictly a tapper uh, I don't do hands-on healing, or, or, and I, I use some occasional electro, electrical devices for myself, um, such as a pulse electromagnetic field mattress I have, or the Alpha Stim device that one of my uh, my uh, acupuncture colleague has lent me uh, to use. Uh, those are useful, but tapping is it's really, um, really I, more than just energy. Uh, it's something very important about what's going on in your in your brain and your memories uh, that we tap into when we do EFT. And I tell people, any bad thing that ever happens to you is like a malware program. So we can now use a computer analogy for what's happening in EFT. So, you know, a malware program is a program you don't want. It gets downloaded into your computer uh, and does things to it that you, you didn't ask for. And so think of a trauma that you have earlier in life and you, your body will shake or react in whatever way it does. And then that signal gets uh, uploaded into your acupuncture meridians and up into your brain in the limbic system, which is all your emotional processing. And there's a file up there for every bad thing that ever happened to you. And in the file, there's a picture and a story and then this program that runs your body back to the original scene of, of the trauma. And so what we do with EFT is we just find the file name and repeat the file name, which causes the program to run. And if you think about a military veteran who's been traumatized with PTSD, he's got a, he or she have, have a P- PTSD programs that run – triggered by almost any kind of flashback or uh, and and they're pretty much out of control but we do this in a controlled fashion so you just say the name of the file start that program running and have your body re-experience some of that and then you tap on the acupuncture points in your face and chest which is essentially like hitting, hitting the delete key on your computer and what you want to do is uninstall the program and when you get done tapping you can go back and check and see if the program's still there Really? All right. Well, let's let's break this down a bit. What does EFT stand for? So emotional freedom techniques with an S on the end, which Gary Craig developed uh, 30 years ago. And you tap with usually second and third fingers on the acupuncture points on your face and chest. And that sends a signal back to your brain, uh, which competes with the original program that's put in. If you think about a computer file, you open up a Word document. You typed uh, – there was a, say there was something you'd written in it uh, you know, a couple of years ago. And then you type a bunch of new stuff into it, and then you save that file again. It's not the same file that it was when you had it a few years before. So if you open up a memory file in your brain about something bad that happened to you years ago, and you hit the delete key – tapping on your acupuncture points and you actually get this pleasant sensation of stimulating your acupuncture points and then you save that file again and next time you open it up the program that's in there is this pleasant tapping sensation not the uh heart beating you know uh chest really? tightness yeah that you've changed the program 
So, so all right. So the, this person who had PTSD about something I, could, could be from war. Could be uh, when they've gone through this process, they don't have the reaction they used to have. Do they not that, have the memories at all? Uh, you still have the picture and the story are still there. They might fade a little bit. You don't want to f- lose those lessons, but you want to lose the um, connection to your body uh, so that you can look at the picture, you can look at the story, and your body doesn't react. And that's the definition of emotional freedom. And in the technical terms, it's called memory reconsolidation because every memory is only as as old as the last time you looked at it. So, if you oh, revisit the so, memory, yeah. Th- that's fascinating. And so, what kind of people are most likely to be helped by this kind of thing? People who have had traumas? Is it a, primarily a psychological, mental thing? Or is it, if you have a pain in your body, can it help that? That's what I'm particularly in, interested in because I think that a lot of these programs are, sure, they're up in our limbic system and our brain, but they manifest as symptoms in our body. So that, I usually work with like the four different lower chakras. The first chakra is about fear, you know. The fir- and they develop in chronological order. So the first chakra, as, as an infant, your only concern is: is it safe to be here in the world or not? So, fear is the emotion associated with the first chakra. And people have had traumatic experiences in that first year of life. They'll develop things like autoimmune disease, which is a fearful response from the immune system. It's like immune system just shooting everything it can see and hitting a lot of its own uh, tissues. So that's the first level. The second level, second chakra develops when you're a toddler. And you think about it, if, if you feel safe as a toddler and your first chakra is okay, the next thing happens, you want stuff. you know. So you start reaching out and grabbing things. <laughs> yeah. And, and what happens is you sure. get told no. So you get you get angry uh, or you feel guilty. Or uh, Those are the emotions of the second chakra. And that's usually stored in the body as pain. So anger it tends to correlate with pain. And then we move up to the third chakra. And that's your self-esteem chakra, which is where you're, you're particularly sensitive to being shamed about things. So if you're shamed as a you know preschooler, uh, you know, grade schooler, that will wind up damaging the third chakra, which is where people get diabetes and obesity and eating disorders. And then when you finally get to the fourth chakra, when you're becoming a young person, that's where you have to deal with all the grief from all you've experienced growing up. And that's the heart chakra. And, and that that often appears as lung issues, asthma, bronchitis, and moving up in the Chinese medicine system into the uh, the uh, sinuses. So post-nasal drip, sinusitis, asthma, bronchitis, th- those are all about the heart chakras, grief issues. So, And that's mainly what I like to work with since I'm a radiologist. I like dealing with physical issues. So. I'm sure. Wow. Okay. And this is another thing I know nothing about. I know nothing about acupuncture. I know nothing about the chakras. But I, I do, do want to tell everyone listening that I have seen enough in just in the research I have done to know that that all these basically the Chinese know a lot more than than we do. The ancient Chinese medicine works very well. Um, I I don't even under, I don't understand it at all. The only thing I can say is we know that we are energy bodies. We can see a physical body, but but our bodies really are mostly energy, and it is that energy that the Chinese medicine works on. So naturally, it would be very efficient in helping us to heal. And um, I'm eager to learn more about it. Actually, I'm kind of tickled that it's something you know about. We'll have to talk about it another time. Uh, but so so what do you want people to know? right now people who are listening and saying oh this might be helpful i mean what what are there people all over who do what you do or is it is there a network of this because you'd have to be in person right it can't be it can't be long distance oh most of what i do now is zoom so i just zoom groups or zoom individual sessions i actually for the last month i've been running a a Thursday, uh, 5.30 Eastern Daylight Time group uh, called Tapping Like It's 1929. Uh, that's <laughs> What's that all about? What's 1929 uh, about? Uh, you know, the Great Depression. And, oh, and, and oh all right. It's actually a, a popular reference to Prince's <clears throat> famous uh, 
a song, a ta- uh, party like it's 1999. Yeah. Uh, because that was the millennial, you know, party song. And so tapping like it's 1929 means we tap on two things, mainly fear about getting sick and anxiety about economic disaster. So those two things seem to go hand in hand these days. And that's what we're, we've been tapping with a group of about 10 people over the last, uh, uh, some people have been on every call, but we get new people joining every week. So that's <clears throat> information is uh, is also on my um, blogs and websites. So, so, so um, but so who does the tapping? If you're not in the same room with these people, they do they tap themselves? Oh yeah, I, I never tap on anyone. I tap on myself while they're tapping on themselves. So I'm just guiding them through it. Fascinating. I had no idea about any of this. I loved learning new things. This is so great. So um, there on your website, and we'll give everyone the website, um, on your website are, is information about these various things you're doing, the things you're teaching, how people can get in touch with you. Now, there's a, there's a website called um, orientalhealthsolutions.com. Is that your website? That's my wife's acupuncture practice where I consult there a couple of days a week when we're open. But unfortunately, we've been closed for the past month because the irony of uh, the, the, the COVID um, decisions that have been made is that, okay, we have big pharma pushing the vaccine agenda uh, right. in, in a rather blatant way. Right, while, right. They, while they have completely shut down every acupuncture practice, every chiropractor, and every massage therapist in the country. Oh, gee. Even the ones that, I mean, because you, well, I suppose if it's acupuncture, it, it has to be in, in the office, right? That would have to be the case. My, my wife is do, and her, her colleagues are doing herbal, Chinese medicine herbal consults over Zoom, and then people come in and pick up the, uh, the herbs at a drop box in the office. But acupuncture works very well, um, which is, I, I mean, I'm, I still don't get it completely, but I do know it works on the energy body that is, you know, a part of our body until we die, at which point it, it, it leaves. But this is just so interesting. I feel as if we've only gotten started and we're coming pretty close to the end of our time together. We're going to have to do this again, Larry. Um, I'll, I'll be in touch with you about that because we have so much more to talk about. Um, what do you want people to know from what we've just said today? Uh, I would say in terms of what's going on for people now, uh, pay attention to the messages you're getting from your body and from your dreams. It's like we, a lot of times we don't know what's going to happen from day to day here, or it can be just a sense of sameness over and over and over again. Uh, you might want to, in your dream diary, ask, what do I need to know about tomorrow? That's a simple open-ended question. You can ask more specific questions if you've got specific problems you want answers to. And then also ask the same questions of your symptoms that you're experiencing during this stressful time. It's like if you're getting back pain because uh, you're laid off from your job, you know, um, you know, ask what your body's telling you. And, and a lot of financial concerns get localized in the low back. If you're having grief because you lost someone or you've lost a job, that would be more likely to be a, a fourth chakra metal element in the Chinese medicine involving sinuses, postnasal drip. You might ask what you're grieving about. If you're having pain, ask what you're angry about. And if you're having an, a flare-up of autoimmune condition, ask you know what you're afraid of. So those are a couple places to start. And you can interpret your dream symbols the same way as you interpret your your symptoms. It's it's, it's all your subconscious attempting to get a message to you one way or the other. Wow. This has been so interesting. You've opened up new areas for me to study, and I'm very excited about that. Larry, thank you so much for being here. Everyone, This Larry Burke is this wonderful guy. He is a real doctor. I'm married to a doctor. And when I told him, frankly, what you're doing now, Larry, his head exploded, which was unfortunate. We've been married a long time. But um, as you know, traditional doctors are not do- don't like this, but this is such a new, wonderful world that you've entered. Larry's books are Let Magic Happen, Adventures in Healing with a Holistic Radiologist. Also, Dreams That Can Save Your Life, Early Warning Signs of Cancer and Other Diseases. 
and his primary website is letmagichappen.com. And his wife's website through which you can reach him is orientalhealthsolutions.com. You don't have to worry about crashing your car if you're listening in a car because I'll put this all with the materials for, for, for this episode. Um, Larry, this is just great. I, you're, I think what you're doing is wonderful for well, people, I, helping them understand all this stuff. Thank you so much. I want I want to put in a plug for my my, my favorite uh, holistic friend and and, uh, and promoter, uh, Dr. Christiane Northrup. So if you have never been to her Facebook page, she has 459,000 people on her page, and she posts most of my blogs for me, which is a wonderful boost. But for the last eight, nine days since there was a major meditation with a million, about a million people uh, the Sunday before Easter, Saturday before Easter, and she participated in that. And since then, she's been putting out a daily uh, video, short video called The Great Awakening. Watch If you ever need a boost, just go and watch these short five-minute videos. They will just lift your energy so much. And the last thing she did recently was to post a movie, a free movie that just came out called Out of Shadows. It's the most important movie of the year. It talks about the shadow aspects of the media and how they shape our reality. So I think that fits your theme very nicely. So if you're there, seeking – Yes, let's let let's have her. We'll have her as a guest too, if she's willing to come, and and we'll have you back as well. But all of this will be also, as I say, everyone in the materials, so that uh, you'll be able to investigate these things for yourself. Thank you so much, Larry. This has been really great. Uh, thanks, Roberta. Everyone, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. I'm really glad you could be here. Hasn't this been fun and exciting and scary all at once? Please never forget that you are a powerful, eternal being. You never began. You never will end. And when you really get what that means, it's going to change everything in your life for the better. Next week, our guest will be Laura Powers. She'll be here for the second time. Laura is a prominent psychic clairvoyant and psychic medium, and she now uses all of the things that she's been able to learn in her very busy, exciting life, communicating with, sp with spirits, communicating with angels, and other energy beings as well. Again, we're talking about energy to help her clients better understand and change their lives. This is more mental. What we've been doing today had also is physical. But next week, she's going to be talking about communicating with our pets. Believe it or not, many of the people who communicate with me are trying to understand how to communicate with their pets, both the living ones and the dead ones. So she's going to help us learn more about that. Please join us next week. And this week, We've been having a life-changing conversation with Dr. Larry Burke. He is an MD, a CEHP, Certified Ed, um, Energy Health Practitioner. See, I remembered Larry. <laughs> Tapping coach. He's trained uh, in hypnosis, acupuncture, and EFT. And he is someone with a tremendous background. He's a traditional physician who, as I say, he got off the reservation, and he's doing some amazing things for people. Um He's now working out, he's practicing, he's living the kinds of medical techniques that are going to be commonplace in every medical office within 40 or 50 years. He's working on them now. This is the future of medicine. Energy healing is where it's going. Chemicals, as, as I've told you, they're, they're saying that they're estimating energy healing is 100 times as effective as mere chemical healing. So this is the future that we've been talking about today, and it's an exciting one. So thank you, Larry. I'm so glad you're here. We're going to make you a friend and have you on a lot because this is the kind of thing people need to know. We're, we're living now in, in a future in which Everything is energy. Nothing exists except energy, and we're going to finally learn how to use it. I'm so excited about today. As you know, my own nonfiction books are Liberating Jesus, My Thomas, The Fun of Dying, The Fun of Staying in Touch, The Fun of Growing Forever. Very soon, uh, it also is going to be The Fun of Loving Jesus. There are children's books, too. The adult books are all available as audiobooks. Of course, the children's books. Children's books are pretty picture books. You can order all of my books through bookstores or on Amazon.com. 
And if you want to talk to me about anything at all, please just reach out by going to the Greed Contact block on robertagrimes.com and send me an email. I answer every email. It can take a little while sometimes because I'm getting so many every day. But I'm, it is important to me that if you reach out to me, it's important that I help you in whatever way you would like to be helped. Past episodes of Seek Reality are available on webtalkradio.net, realrevolutionradio.com, iTunes, iHeart, the Dream Vision 7 radio family, and on an app which you can get in the iTunes store for free, which will just bring you each new episode. Dear friends, my role in your life is just to help you in every way I can. And so I mean it when I say, if you reach out to me, I will reach out back. And, and just let's try to make this the most important time of our lives when we Begin to build a future which is going to be better not just for us but for our children and their children and our and the children who will come after them. Meanwhile, this has been Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Please enjoy, please make the most of this coming week in our one reality, knowing that you are a powerful, eternal being and you, most of all in the universe, you are infinitely loved. You've been listening to Seek Reality with Roberta Grimes. Roberta blogs and answers questions at robertagrimes.com. Join us every week as we explore what the afterlife evidence and modern science combine to tell us is true about the one reality we all share. Knowing the truth changes everything.